It's day 24 of the Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series, and today is a moderate Metcon with no equipment needed. Let's go! All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving, and that means that we are getting started with some arm circles and high knees. Oh my goodness, yes. There's still a little bit of lingering stiffness and soreness from our push day this week, but I'm definitely feeling ready for this one. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body. And I tell you what, I think that one of the best ways to make peace with your menopausal body is to have a fantastic Metcon workout like this one. Now, you guys, I know I get asked this question all the time. Metcon is simply a fancy way of saying metabolic conditioning which is a fancy way of saying cardio and in this case, body weight strength. Sometimes we do use dumbbells, but today is all body weight. It's cardio and strength with no rest. That's really all there is to it. We're going back and forth between high heart rate, but of course, low impact, absolutely no jumping cardio and slower moving, but still difficult in its own way, body weight strength. Today is going to be, today's gonna be a good one. I'm, I'm already, looking forward to how fun and sweaty this is going to be. I have the handy dandy gym boss here set for intervals of 30 seconds of cardio and one minute of body weight strength. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers with arm closers and booty kickers. You guys, I don't know what happened somewhat recently. I, I think I know what it is actually now that I'm saying this out loud. So when we are cooling down, I call them arm openers, but when we're warming up, I call them arm crossers. And for whatever reason, the last several workouts, I have not been able to call them arm crossers. I, I need to, I need to just write that down or something. <laughs> Sure. Do you ever do that? Like something that you've done a million times before suddenly seems foreign. I'm sure it's because of, I'm sure it's because of the set. If you happen to skip yesterday's recovery, you might have noticed that today everything looks different. Everything looks different because everything is different and it's definitely throwing me off my game, but we're still going to have a fun time today. I'm going to get used to the new furniture, the new carpet, the new positioning of the camera, the new everything, because, because that's what we do. We get used to stuff and that's what your body does too. It's why we have our one push day so that your body can make adaptations, AKA get used to the things that we're doing. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. So we are going back and forth between cardio and strength that we're actually starting with cardio because there's absolutely no rest at all during today's workout. I want you to think about how we can keep this nice and moderate. For me, that means a moderate pace. I'm not gonna go too fast, I'm not gonna go too crazy, but I am going to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm gonna take each interval as it comes. Today is a repeating, no repeat. So I've got pairs of exercises, one cardio, one strength. We're going to do the pair twice before we move on. We're gonna get started with high knee, high punches, which is literally exactly what it sounds like. We've got one high knee while we're doing a high punch on the other side. We are going to cross our body. So it's a little bit of balance work, a little bit of core work. When in doubt, we always get a little bit of something sneaky in there too. Let's go ahead and get started. And here we go. So high knee, high punches. Your hands are just like shoulder height. One hand is going up overhead while that opposite knee is coming up. Now this 30 seconds, it's plenty of time to really get rocking, but I'm also gonna tell you that when, we're, when it beeps, we're going directly without any kind of rest into our strength exercise, which is a deadlift into the letter Y. So it's a body weight only deadlift, which means that we're gonna have our feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Gonna really pull your core in straight. We're going to come down in a deadlift and as we come up, we're going to open up our hands into the letter Y. Really squeeze, squeeze, squeezing from the middle of your back. That deadlift, of course, your hips are driving the motion. And I realized that I got started a little bit fast because I was still in cardio mode. This is what happens with a Metcon. It's work for your brain as well as your body. We're going back and forth between intensities. Slow moving strength work is very different intensity than high intensity, meaning high speed, but a low impact and moderate pace. <laughs> cardio. When it beeps again, we're going to do those high knee, high punches one more time. Really thinking about squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from the middle of your back for those letter Y's. Your hips are driving the deadlift motion. Push your hips back, pull your hips forward. This is a little bit easier to really find good form 
And here we go, right back into that high knee, high punch. Deadlifts are a little bit easier to find good form when we're not weighted. Because when you have something heavy in your hands, you're really, you're kind of thinking about your arms. You're thinking about your arms pulling you forward. But when your hands are empty, it's actually a really nice time to totally focus on how your hips are absolutely driving that deadlift motion. So when it beeps again, we're gonna do those deadlifts into the letter Y for the second and final time before we move on to another a pair of exercises. So feet about hip width apart. Push your hips back, 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 back. You're just rolling your hands right down the fronts of your legs and then squeeze from your glutes and boom out to the letter Y. Oh my gosh. We're getting literally everything in our rear chain with this exercise. Really squeezing, squeezing, squeezing through your hamstrings and your glutes and ooh, all the way up into those latissimus dorsi and up into the middle of your back. Now, when it beeps again, we're gonna do cardio again, but we're going into a different pair of exercises. So we're gonna do reach across high and reach across low, which again, it's always what it sounds like, you guys, unless it's not. <laughs> We're gonna reach across high on both sides and then we're gonna reach across low on both sides. It's a little bit of coordination for me to think about what we're doing. If it, I'm sure you've done reach across with me before. It's literally just reaching across. It's very simple. If you can't do the high and low, feel free to just pick one. It's totally okay. So reach across high and high, reach across low and low, reach across high and high, and reach across low and low. When it beeps again, we're going into a squat to sumo squat. And that's, again, exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna start with a regular squat, and then we're gonna step out to the side into a big sumo squat, and then back to the center for a squat, and then out to the other side, just to kind of even it out. You should be, you should have your body weight exactly in center. So squat, and then step out to sumo squat. Oh my gosh, back to center, to squat, out to the other side to sumo squat. Now, of course, if you don't want to squat, don't like to squat, don't can't do squats, totally fine to simply be doing kicking. Help yourself to whatever kind of kicking feels best to you. Maybe forward kick, back kick, maybe side kick, maybe mixing it up, really getting some great balance work while, of course, working those glutes, my friends. I do suggest, because we're doing a sumo squat here, that you do at least some side kicks because that way you're getting that inner and outer thigh that we're getting with these squat to sumo squats. Whew. When it beeps again. Take your time on this one, by the way. I realize I'm going a little bit fast. Part of that is because I'm excited and enthusiastic about today, but part of that is because when the timer is going, sometimes it always feels like cardio, but this one actually is. Reach across high, reach across low. High and low. Awesome job. Thinking about your intensity, which means your pace, because this is cardio, means we should be going faster. <laughs> when it beeps though, and we go back to those squat to sumo squats, it's totally okay to slow it on down. Really thinking about good form, thinking about it being a strength exercise, because it is. Well, I'm gonna take my own advice here. <laughs> squat <sighs> to sumo squat. Nice job. Oh my goodness, really feeling this work. It's that standing up part that's actually the most difficult. And that's part of this exercise is thinking about where your center of gravity is and how to get into each of these positions. When it beeps again, we're moving on to our next pair of exercises, which is double knee X's is the cardio. So it's double knees paired with dancing X's, which means we're gonna make a big X with our body. We're gonna bring one knee to its opposite elbow, crunching in the middle two times in a row. Normally we only do it once, but this time we're doing it twice. It's a little bit, again, a little bit of work for your brain as well as your body, taking an exercise that we do all the time. So knee, knee on the same side, knee and knee on the other side. That big dancing letter X, doing two, two repetitions on each side and sometimes three because sometimes that might have been 
<laughs> Sometimes I get lost in my own exercise. One of these again, we're doing overhead to oblique crunches. So we're gonna have our hands up overhead, which I realize we already have for this interval too. You guys, there's always strength even in our cardio. Hands up overhead. We're gonna reach one elbow down towards that knee, crunching up. This is balance work. It is slow and controlled. You're thinking about having your elbows back behind the plane of your shoulder. Really thinking about biceps all the way up next to your ears. Your upper and middle back is engaged the entire time. And then, yes, absolutely, we get to engage the glutes, the inner and outer thighs, and absolutely those abs and obliques while we're doing this one too. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. We're breathing and we're thinking about excellent form with our core pulled in. When it beeps again, coming back to those double knee X's. Awesome job. Making sure that you're breathing and really taking the time to think about your form. This could be cardio. This could absolutely be cardio. You could be going much faster. But when we slow it down, well, now we're not slowing it down. We're doing double the X's again for the second and final time. I'm bringing my hands down a little bit wider. <laughs> this letter X. It's funny how all of a sudden I'm feeling my shoulder muscles. It happens. You guys, when it beeps again, we're doing those overhead to oblique crunches for the second and final time. Getting a nice little pace going here. Absolutely no jumping, no transitions to the ground today either, by the way. <sighs> Hands up. Overhead to oblique crunches. Take the time to bring your elbow all the way down to your knee and your knee all the way up to your elbow. That extra inch, that half an inch, that quarter of an inch that sometimes we let slide. Let's go ahead and take the time to really squeeze and make that happen when it beeps again. We're doing side step bursts. So we do get to put our hands down, thank goodness. What that means is that we're going to crouch down a little. It's not a full squat. It's a little tiny, a little scoosh. We're going to scoosh down and as we come up, we're going to burst out on that side and take that big step out. It's like an exploding letter K, except that we are actually taking the full step out and switching our center of gravity. So it is a big step to the side each time. So it's a little scoosh, burst, and step. Scoosh. <laughs> fall over, burst and step, scoosh, burst and step, burst and step, burst and step. It's much easier if you actually just go faster. I was trying to explain it and go slow and that was much harder. When it beeps, we're doing a reverse lunge to a high knee, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna step back into a reverse lunge, and as we come up from it, gonna bring up a high knee. So step back into a reverse lunge, up into a high knee. And then we're gonna go on the other side as well. Reverse lunge and up. Switching back and forth, reverse lunge, and up, really thinking about excellent form. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze your core. <sighs> thinking about using a good pace for this one. When we're doing strength, we really have to think about our excellent form. When it beeps again, we're doing that side step burst. <sighs> Getting our rhythm, doing a little scoosh, and a burst, and a side step. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure that I have done it differently in the past and I'm thinking that I do really want to take that extra step to bring the leg down into switching sides. So scoosh, burst, scoosh, burst. Yeah, taking the extra step really, oh, I know it slows down the cardio, but it actually really makes you think about where your body is, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with this exercise. You think about what our body is in space and time. So a little squat, scoosh and burst, scoosh and burst, when it beeps again. Doing that reverse lunge to the high knee again. Okay, step back into a reverse lunge. Bring that knee forward into a high knee. Really thinking about stepping back far enough 
that your front knee is not going forward over your front toe. It's a big step and honestly, sometimes it's a little bit scary. We're thinking about our balance, really pulling in our core. Of course, if you don't want to do squats or lunges, help yourself to kicking. When it beeps again, we're going into our next pair of exercises, starting with twisting kicks which is just what it sounds like. We're gonna twist our torso while kicking one foot at a time. So we're twisting into the leg that is kicking, meaning that we're kind of closing it up, almost, almost going into like an oblique crunch across your body. You are welcome to use your hands as much or as little as you would like to. There we go. When we get our hands kind of rocking with a twisting kick, you can really bring up the intensity. Today is a moderate day, so how much do you want to bring up your intensity? I'm just going to keep my hands going forward. When it beeps again, we're going to have our hands up because we're going to be doing peekaboo side steps. We're going to make a peekaboo, which I know if you have done, was it last week's push day where we did peekaboos and I will never forget them? Yes, exactly. Elbows up to just about shoulder height. As we open up, we're really squeezing from the middle of our back to really feel that peekaboo even without weights in your hands. This is all about those big swimmer muscles in your upper back. We're also taking a nice big step to the side, which really works your inner and outer thigh as well as your balance. Every time we're taking a big step in any direction, it really needs to be thought about. When it beeps again, doing those twisting kicks, coming back again. Beautiful job, really keeping your core pulled in tight, thinking about excellent form. I know it's easier to think about excellent form when you have something heavy in your hands. It's kind of odd to be moving slowly like this with no weights. But when we're thinking about excellent form, we're getting awesome results even without the extra resistance. So twisting kicks, getting your hands kind of rocking into it. We're twisting while kicking. Really thinking about pulling your core, of course, because we always do. <laughs> Even though we're doing cardio and we're moving quickly, we're thinking about how we're moving our abs and obliques. And that means that we need to protect our lower back. Don't let your lower back volunteer for this work. This is abs and obliques, my friends. When it beeps again, we're doing those peekaboo side steps again. So hands up, elbows together, elbows wide, far apart, elbows together. When it beeps again, we've got another set. This was our second and final time. We've got another set of cardio and strength, starting with upside down jacks. What that means is we're gonna start with our hands up rather than our hands down. When your hands are doing jumping jacks, one foot is gonna step out to the side. So your lower body is actually gonna be doing very similar <laughs> to what we're doing right now. Step Stepping and tapping out one foot at a time, <sighs> really thinking about actually stepping from side to side on these upside down jacks. Hands are just doing jumping jacks, nice and easy. <sighs> We're gonna move at a pace that feels good. I'm feeling the burn in my shoulders from this one though. Oh my goodness. You guys, you don't have to have something heavy in your hands to really feel these peekaboos. Okay, hands up. We're gonna come down and back and down and back. So your hands are doing jumping jacks. We're fully committing to that step out to the side, step out to the side. When it beeps again, we're doing a cross body crunch and extension. Hands are just gonna be on your shoulders. You're gonna bring your opposite elbow towards your opposite knee, taking the time to really crunch in the middle. On that same arm and leg, we're gonna fully come out into an extension. So opposite elbow to opposite knee, and then extend out and back to center. So opposite elbow to opposite knee and then extend out. So it's basically as though this crossbody crunch had a baby with star balance. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's how difficult this is. Cross your body for a crunch and then extend out into the middle of star balance and come back. So crunch and full extension out to the side. Awesome job. When it beeps again, coming back to those upside down jacks for the second time. 
really take your time on this. Again, this could totally, this would be a horrible cardio exercise, but it really could be. In fact, I might make it a cardio exercise at some point. Crunch and extend, yeah, it could happen. You might see it soon. <laughs> But right now, we're thinking about it being balance work. We're thinking about taking our time and then doing upside down jacks. So as your hands are down, we're taking that full step out. Really thinking a lot today about switching our center of gravity, switching where our foot is holding on to us. There's a lot to be said for this kind of work. It's all, it's all a little bit of balance work. When it beeps again, we're doing those cross body crunch and extensions for the second and final time. Take your time to take that full step and out and back. All right, hands at your shoulders, thank goodness, crunch. Whew, doggies, and extend. I can tell that my heart rate is up, 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 even on a moderate day. Of course, we get sweaty. And of course, balance work gets tough. It's why, it's why we're doing balance work for the finisher every day this month. You guys, when it beeps again, I've got another, it's our final pair of cardio and body weight strength. We're starting with forward hinge arm flappers. Right now, we're still crunching and extending, but a forward hinge arm flapper is very similar to, honestly, a deadlift, except your hands are doing jumping jacks, and it is a cardio move, so you are absolutely welcome to go quickly on it, as quickly as you can have good form with, making sure that your core is pulled in tight, your back stays straight. It's always, always, always about excellent form, my friend. Doggies, membrane to breathe, crunching and extending. All right, forward hinge arm flappers. Booty goes back, booty comes forward. This whole motion is driven by your hips. When it beeps again, we're gonna get into a wide, like a sumo squat position. We're gonna be doing side lunge seesaws. Again, if you don't wanna lunge, feel free to kick. I do encourage you to do side kicks because that's essentially what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be in that sumo squat. We're gonna bring our weight to one side, shifting our center of gravity over to one side. So we're gonna shift over to one side and bring up the opposite foot and then stand up. Push your hips back, come over to the other side and bring up that opposite foot and stand up. Making sure that you're standing up each and every time so that you can really feel your hips go back into each side lunge. If you just lunge from side to side, I can almost guarantee, because it would happen to all of us, that your hips would start coming forward and then your knee is gonna get over the front of your toe. We wanna make sure that we have excellent side lunge Oh my gosh, form every single time. This, in case you didn't notice it, is absolutely core work. Really thinking about your balance, standing up, pushing back, coming down into that side lunge, trying to keep your head up and your chest up as much as possible, trying to land your feet. I noticed that my feet are getting a little bit closer together because that got tough. And then here we go into those forward hinge arm flappers for the second and final time. You guys, this has really been a workout for our brain as well as our bodies. I know, I know, it's tough. <laughs> but you're tougher. This is our last pair. I'm not sure if I entirely mentioned that. This is our last pair. When it beeps again, we're gonna do those side lunge seesaws for the second and final time. Whew, awesome job. So, side lunge seesaw. Now you guys, I've already told you whew, that we've got a finisher. Here's what we're gonna do. Because of the way the timer is set up, we're going to have a little bit of cardio during our finisher. It's not entirely balanced. All we're gonna do is march in place. It's very, very simple. So we've got 30 seconds of marching in place before we do our balance work. The balance work, however, is the long interval. So, so yes, you're welcome for the 30 seconds of marching in place. <laughs> But then, oh my gosh, down into your side lunge and seesaw. But then we're balancing. Yes, for an entire minute on one side each. 
It is, I'm gonna tell you about it after we're marching. I'm gonna think about this right now because I really have to think about my form. The good news is though, when we come up from this one, when it beeps, we're going into a marching. So take care of whatever, whatever pace feels good because you know that it's the finisher and we're gonna be doing balance work. I highly encourage you to just keep it kind of moderate, like bring your heart rate down a little bit. This does not need to be full on cardio. Here's what it looks like. We're doing hand up hip openers. So you're gonna stand on one foot. The other foot, you're gonna have your high knee up. Your hands are just gonna be like right here at your chest, shoulders, waist, whatever feels comfortable. As you open the hip up, on the same side, that hand is going up. So one high knee, you've got your hip going open and your hand going up on the same side. So often we go across your body because that is its own difficulty, but this one, having both limbs on one side of your body doing something different, honestly, there's a little bit of, well, there's a lot of brain body connection here in terms of, it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach because one is going up and the other is going out. We're thinking about both hip bones staying forward the entire time. You're only rolling that leg open as wide as your glutes can get you. So you're not actually opening your entire hip. It, it's not a stretch like that. It's strength. This is your glutes pulling your leg open. You can see this is a very small motion for me. Both hip bones pointed forward the entire time. Ah, and then we're coming back to marching. Okay. We survived one side. <laughs> that was my allegedly less balanced leg. But here's the thing, I already know this going into it. Even though I can generally balance better on my right leg, the coordination of doing something with my hand and my leg on the left side, I, this is probably gonna be funny. Just so you know, it's probably gonna be very amusing to watch me trying to do this because I'm already thinking <sighs> about open and up and then back to center and open and up. And as I suspected, this balance leg feels easier. My knee is soft but strong, core is pulled in tight. But this opening up of my hip, I can feel my leg really wanting to swing open rather than, rather than trying to use my glutes. My left glute is like, nah, we're good here. Let's just go ahead and open up and call this a stretch. My left side is, generally speaking, more flexible than my right side, but it is also less strong, which means technically I can open it up a little bit wider because it's stretching, but I'm having a hard time actually asking the glute to fire. Here's the great news. When it beeps again, we are done. Actually, we are better than done. We are finished. You have done an excellent job concentrating. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Let's cool this down. Ah, you guys, you guys, let's go ahead and do some arm circles. I know. I know, that was, that was a lot of sweat. Considering, I, I think this every time I do a Metcon, because we're going back and forth between like high speed and low speed, I always think that it's gonna be less sweaty. Like I convince myself to do workouts like this because I'm like, oh, it'll be easier than just doing all cardio or it'll be less sweaty than doing all cardio. <laughs> the lies we tell ourselves, right? No, plenty of sweat to be had today. And you did a fan fantastic job with it, my friends. Let's think about tomorrow. Let's plan ahead for tomorrow because tomorrow is full on strength. It's moderate strength. We're going to be using our moderate dumbbells, but it is all one speed and that speed is slow and controlled. So we're going to go ahead and eat our baseline today. We're going to feel really good about coming into a nice weights workout tomorrow. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. <laughs> not crossers, even though we are gonna cross them because we're gonna cross them across your chest and we're gonna give ourselves a big hug and a pat on your back because oh my goodness, what a great job you did today. You guys, here on screen, I do have an extended cool down for you because, because we got kind of sweaty today, didn't we? Even on a moderate day, there really is plenty of sweat to be had. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time with this one. I always have a good time with you. You guys, make sure that you click that subscribe button before you go and I'll see you tomorrow for moderate strength.